Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we shall be looking at one of the most dominant hard hyper carry solo queue games I've ever seen and it took place in a challenger slash grandmaster game. Now as you would have seen in a thumbnail the meaning of life is no longer 42 it is now the meaning of death. Things of course have to go your way to get this fed but it's also about putting yourself in the right position to take advantage of the map and includes important notes about how not to throw and even with this kind of unnatural 30 plus kill count that you might not be as far ahead as you think. This is made in conjunction with the kindred coaching video I put on the gameplay channel which also has my rundown of the Twitch Rivals games I had vs Metaphor so feel free to please like the video and subscribe to both channels for what feels like infinite amounts of jungle content. And we really don't need a more hyperbolic introduction than that so as you already saw the runes on your page we head into the action and trust me there's a lot of fiesta in this game which should be reminiscent of your own solo queue games and the first thing is we make direct reference to the first blood video that just came out where invading for first blood has to be done carefully like attaching a cryptic message to a pigeon that could change the course of war and not with the carelessness of a Sizwani main because you can never die. The Kindred's early ward which is great against more passive junglers against invasive species like Nidlees and Rengars and Chakos. And because of this they see a late invade by the Nidli and her personal crocodile escort which subsequently has the red team thwarting the invade and collapsing. Now Kindred isn't always the best level 1 champion but that W can do a lot of work in an AoE drawn out fight much like this one. And due to the CC and damage profile of their team as well as the numbers advantage they're able to get first blood and assist. And Nidli is able to finish off the Galio and escape and while she's doing so hits a really nice fadeaway spear to snipe away the large raptor. This leaves the babies dazed and confused but nonetheless the Kindred can no longer get level 2 by finishing that camp. Nidli on the other hand will proceed with Karma to at least force the Kindred into a vertical jungling situation by heading directly to their blue. This is very easy to see as they run directly across mid lane and the support Brad does a good job of intervening trying to steal the blue leaving a ward so at least the whole team is aware of exactly where Nidli is. Now as Nidli is obsessed with Lord Grumpulus rather than heading directly to the blue the Kindred makes a level 2 gank on a T-Ping or a Necton who will only look to all in the Lulu top like at season 5. Sadly the mark switch was used a little too late for the amount of damage they seem to have. While that first mark eludes them it's actually okay because if you use it too soon and they notice it they're just gonna slice and dice and you know disengage. Nonetheless the kill is enough to guarantee the stealing of the blue buff as well as the top side scuttle which RNGesus blesses with a passive mark. Now this kind of lead is one of a kind for Kindred and honestly the lack of marks at this point is irrelevant. The fact that you got one you'd be like this in most of your games. Knowing that Nidalee's early pressure is now directed on the bottom half of the map and you have two hard roaming mids with CC Pantheon vs Galio it is a good idea to try get some prior there for your lanes. A little bit of patience on the mid side for an all in equals another easy kill for the jungler. Nidli in hindsight should have read the situation, skipped the raptors and taken advantage of the Galio's push knowing full well that the kindred will be in that vicinity. This mistake costs her her life as she walks way too close to the kindred who has to but flash order to grab a fourth kill within four minutes. It's normally at this point that you kind of think alright this is this is going to be a good game. However a lot of junglers will look passively now say right this is great work let me do some cams by reset. But in the case you become as powerful as a tyrant able to govern posthumously the onus is on you to really fight as much as possible as almost no one can deal with you. Use that extended sequencing we talked about in the previous videos with Hecarim. You see the bottom lane pushing, they're out of positions, there was a weird invade where summoners were burned. Head on down and as they say in Korea, Gam Sam Nida, another free 2 kills. You realize that even though this game feels like it's going turbo fast it's been just over 40 seconds since the last mark was taken and Nidli didn't prioritize securing that crab. So Kindred is able to get a second one on the bottom side as well as 6 kills. Swish. Now you can reset and now the Nidli will be forced seeing all this unfold into thinking how she can get back into the game and while turbo farming is what she can do. Kindred is a hyper carry as well who can queue her Q. So while a drive by gank attempt on the mid lane is noble by Nidli, Kindred could simply afford to take her cams, get that XP rolling and then transition to the mid lane. Instead though they force the action and kills Nidalee but gives a shutdown to the Pantheon. If by some small chance of luck you find yourself in Kindred situation your shutdown gold is going to be enormous and every bad decision that leads to a death rather than taking a breather to get camps to counter jungle to secure objectives will cost your team the lead even if you are giga smurfing because guess what the rest of your team is not doing that. While your team will have a hand in keeping you alive and helping you carry the game you are trying to 1v5 in terms of your damage profile and your ability to basically threaten them every time there's a fight. Upon respawning Kindred does wolves and would naturally attempt to do Gromp to get 6 but the leader of Dutes is already in position for a mid lane gank. In theory it's best to do Gromp here first so you get the boosted level 4 experience 
This was the only camp that was taken so far, and it was done so by the Nidalee. And then you can eat the wolves afterwards, and then basically you have options. Look to take the Drake, control a second red spawn on top side. However, the spiciness of using those seven kills takes over the mind. Rod begins to clear the ward and ready to go in. Of course, the Nidalee is going to see this, right? So once they commit to the gank, the Nidalee is in prime position, shadowing the mid lane, ready to counter gank, which is a great read, good reaction, and on the Kindred's part, two minutes, two deaths. It seems like Lion was playing the first few minutes and now Wolf has taken over with no hands. That's okay, you're allowed these little mistakes, obviously, you know, not too many, but it's time to refocus and reapply the pressure. Your lead is still very big. Do Krugs? Do Red. You see Nidalee and the enemy blue spawning as they try to regain control over their own jungle. And once you look at the lane priors and situations of your laners and that they're able to actually support you in this fight, you can head on over. The Ruby Crystal Buy is part of the quest for a Warrior Hurricane Cleaver build, which we will talk about in a few minutes, will come in absolutely huge with the Lulu, as a Kindred is very lucky to survive with that Triumph proc and shields, but is able to be a Kindred Savant to be shifty to be a mechanical god, press those buttons like they've never been pressed and basically lives. Also good job Lulu, but also nice Ruby Crystal because otherwise you're 100% dead before you even get the Triumph proc. So was it the best fight? You know, it was good to take. I definitely agree on the invade, especially with numbers in your lead. You do have to play it well. But just remember, if you have a more supportive team and you are the damage, remember you must be sensible about these fights, your itemization. And yes, just a little bit of luck, as well as a very nice high quality skin. You look good, you feel good, you play good. This is a law of all things. Take the blue, take the grump, take the crab, take the herald, reset, and rock yourself like a hurricane. And I don't think I recall the last time a kindred bought a hurricane this early. I did say in the intro, this is basically a very unnatural game. From the enemy jungle perspective, yes, Nidalee again needs to try and get some kills. At this point, turbo farming isn't going to do anything. You need to get on the map or you're basically going to get jungle gapped. And I think that's a very good phrase to remind yourselves when you feel like the enemy jungler is getting a bit too far ahead of you, getting kills on lanes. You must get active, you must look to make a play. However, as I talked about in the Hacker Room video, what you must do, what he did so well, was immediately ditching camps and situations to get to fights and take advantage of all these situations. The Kindred does not do this as well, is a bit more selfish waiting to finish the Wolves, waiting to finish the Blue, I mean you already have a Blue, before they leave to rotate. In a closer game, this really could harm you, so be sure, unless it's a huge spike like reaching level 11, that you rotate to the fight as soon as possible. Again, the fight is pretty pretty easy. There's no real need to narrate anything interesting. A flash is burned, Qs and orders are used, W and E. Alt is also used, but you can just see the amount of difference in terms of DPS from being this fed versus the enemy team. You can shove the way for more XP, eat the dragon out. There's no point being this fed if you're not getting objectives. And now make sure the rest of your blue quadrant is cleared because we're going to reset and make sure we pay a visit to the top lane. They've been a little lonely since those early ganks. It's also because if you see the Nidalee topside killing your personal support chauffeur, we can assume she's going to be greedy to try and steal some experience. Even if she doesn't, we can head to the top tower, defend it, take our red camps. But if you do find a wild cougar, again, get your minds out of the gutter. Atomization is huge as Renekton rotates. Kindred is able to survive thanks to the Merc Treads and Kindle Gem. And this gives the Lulu enough time to TP for the additional kill. Now you can use the Herald for plates and a tower. Remember, the first Herald 314 is used for plates, for gold spikes, to finish off that first tower which elevates the game state and tilts the enemy team into complaining why their jungler is useless. And then you can use the next Herald for a proper coordinated push to open the map up for mid to late game. However, if the enemy top lane is playing like they're on NA rather than Korea, ensure to kill them again for the disrespect. Now, this is a game state in which a lot of you might find yourselves. Maybe, you know, minus the 15 kills, but you're really fed, you feel you can 1v5, you've opened up the map with a dragon and a herald. It's at this point you want to roam a bit with your team, make picks, and take remaining plates and outer towers. What we tend to see more frequently is that you fall back to your jungle and you remain a bit more passive instead of really trying to take over the game. So now while you watch the Kindred do that, go from top river to mid to bot tower, you might be thinking that the atomization of Black Cleaver in this case makes Alice quiver from a distance. You could very easily go into full crit here given how much damn gold you have, and this Kindred will, but at the moment staying alive to inflict as much pain on the enemy as possible is the actual goal of the game, and rather than, you know, really paying attention to the armor shred, which is great for them as well as Ezreal, the cooldown, the HP, the stickiness of Phage, the increased spell usage and survivability synergy with the Mercury Treads provides an absolutely huge power spike at this point in the game. Now remember, if you don't really need those stats as much and don't have other teammates who can benefit from the armor shred, then Kindred's build diversity is matched only by the diversity of the Yasuo and Yone skins coming up over the next 10 years. I kind of have this feeling that within a year, Yone is going to have three skins already. And I'm over here someone who plays Zyra, Orn, and Kindred. I mean, you imagine how I feel. That being said, none of this matters if you overchase and commit a 700 gold shutdown again. 
as great a game as this Kindred is having, as well as the Lulu is playing trailing and helping them survive, don't go over the top, that's again now 3 deaths that really could easily have been avoided. If you are trying to 1v5 and really solo carry a game, the time that you're off the map, either through death or through bad positioning, the enemy team will then try and claw back macro pressure with whatever tower they can secure, in this case bottom side, and rather than dancing with the wolves, you know, and wolf, please do rotate immediately. I know wolf wants to sit down with his family, but sometimes you really have to help your team out. Then again, none of this matters if you have a BF sword, a cloak from the renaissance, and you can swash yourself a pentakill at, wow, it's only 50 minutes into the game. See, we don't want to use results-based thinking because, you know, what if you weren't this fed? What if you had to rotate immediately? They really get away with it because of the nature of this ridiculous game. Which is why I'm driving home the mistakes and the core principles that you really should be using in your games. Translate that to a dragon, a herald, look to group and now shove it down to close the game as soon as possible. You'll notice the enemy Callista is simply splitting to shove waves and prevent a base incursion, and while the red team is getting a bit kill hungry with these chase downs, which, you know, you're allowed to do, in your games don't be like this, Instead, open their base, remember to stay with your team, but do not take an inhibitor too soon, especially if the enemy team does also scale, because you're just feeding them super minions, you're giving them more shutdowns, as you can see, and the comeback material is just being freely supplied by you. Why would you want to do that? That's right, you don't. Right now, it's time to close the game. You'll see the Kindred shifting into that IE Essence Reaver territory, and for those of you who don't need an app to give you jungle timers, you will see that we have 14 more kills to go, and they're not all as equally honorable, so we will talk about that as well. And I know it seems a little weird that I focused a lot on what the Kindred hasn't done as well as what they have, and that's because in the coaching when people get fed and ask why they can't win games, it's because they're not paying attention to these little things, and then they just go kill hungry, running down the mid into their base looking to secure kills, which is, you know, really great if you have a split pusher, if you have side wave control. As you can see from the minimap here, they have no side wave control, and the killist is once again just shoving up the mid lane, buying time, stalling, unable to actually dive into the enemy base and take towers because they have no tanks and it's way too early to do that. At the same time, you can look how beautiful that skin is. I mean, oh, look at it. That's, it's glorious. I mean, I know we had to wait a long time, but wow. So they leave the base. The enemy tries to chase down. They get a few more kills. They secure the next dragon. And as soon as the enemy leaves their base, starts to venture, tries to get a little bold because of the fact you haven't closed out yet, they haven't surrendered. So they're interested in sort of memeing, I guess. Clean it up and then head into the base with the super wave. You should be able to close. And yes, please, if the enemy team is not FFing and you're all in all chat, everyone's joking around and it's okay to sort of hug the base, stall it out and try to get kills, go for it. But in solo queue, please have a little tact, a little bit of sportsmanship, end the game. No one wants to waste any more time. I know you want 40 kills. If everyone's okay sort of having fun with it, go for it. And considering this is Korea with pro players on the enemy team, I think they're having a bit of fun with it, so it's okay in this instance. But I'm not a fan of the overall practice. I just wanted to throw that note out there. Not that we want to get too serious, of course, but there you have it, how a bad invade or heads up warding can allow you to get a few kills, gank every single lane before you first back, take control of the map and take over it, as well as what fights you should be looking for, what mistakes you should not be making, and how to rotate and be present. And I think that's the most important thing, be present on the map when you are trying to 1v5 because you are the win condition. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something, and of course be a little bit entertained, this was a bit more loose, as was the enemy just throwing themselves at the kindred. Please do like, share and comment if you did, don't forget to head to the coaching channel for all those gameplays and coaching sessions, consider heading to the Twitch as well, all the links in the description. Thank you to all the likes and subs from this video, and as always I will see you all in the next tutorial.